So in today's episode of Lessons from an Old Quilt, we're gonna look at a quilt that's from the 1980s. So this is hard for me because I was a teenager in the 1980s and it seems like it was just 10 years ago, right? In reality, it was over 40 years ago and uh, here we are. So it is indeed an old quilt. Before we get started, my name is Chris O'Neill from Sew the Distance. Thank you for joining me today. So my parents actually purchased this quilt at a yard sale for a couple dollars, and they got a chance to talk to the maker's daughter. Uh, she was selling it, which breaks my heart, but you know, who knows? There might've been a bunch of quilts and they couldn't possibly keep them all. Uh, so anyway, we know for sure it was made in the 1980s. And if we didn't know for sure it was made in the 1980s, just looking at the fabric, you can tell. It screams the 1980s. All those calicos, the blues, the pinks, the beiges. It's pretty obvious that that's when it was made. It's a really cool quilt. It measures 43 by 44 inches. So it is small. It's probably a baby size quilt or even a lap quilt. It's made completely of scraps. And uh, we'll get into that a little bit as we take a closer look at this quilt. Okay, so when we take a closer look at this quilt, we can see that it is made up of squares and each square is three and a quarter inches finished. So it was cut at three and three quarters inch because we would have a quarter inch seam allowance in that. Uh, and the fabrics are wonderful. They're all pretty much calicos or large prints. They go well together, even though there's some odd ones that don't seem to go, it definitely makes the quilt sparkle. The main colors, of course, are this uh, navy or dark, periwinkle maybe, blue, and this maroon. And then we also see a lot of beiges and pinks thrown in too. But what's interesting is that there's no rhyme or reason to the construction of this quilt. So I tried and tried to find a pattern that uh, was consistent. And every time I thought I'd find a pattern, it was not consistent somewhere else. <laughs> so for example, I saw that this blue is here and the blue is repeated here. And I thought, oh, well, this maker, she just made four patches and put them together. Uh, but that's not true because when we get down here, we're not seeing that same consistent blue. It's semi-consistent, but it's not consistent, which tells me it was put together randomly. And I find that interesting because I really wanted to find a pattern in this and couldn't. But what is really cool about it is the maker managed to distribute those darker tones or darker saturations of color throughout. So we have a nice balance of darks, mediums, and lights. And you can see that by looking at it, but you can also see it when I changed this photo into a black and white image, you can see where the saturation of color is. And that's just, we like that as human beings on our eyes. It looks nice. It gives us a nice calming effect and it's just a nice balance. So there was some thought put into it. I'm not sure exactly what happened or how it was laid out, but there was definitely some planning. At least I think there was, unless it was just a happy accident. So this quilt was constructed in strips and then placed on point. At least I believe so. That's the way it's usually done for this pattern. So it was constructed like this. And then when it was being finished or when the pattern was being solidified, it was put on point. That's what we call this. We also see these wonderful setting triangles over here that go all the way around. There's some yellow in the fabrics, but not a lot. So that was an interesting choice. And it's a very bright yellow. So it really makes it pop uh, and gives it a nice frame. Another fabric I want to point out to you is this large scale print right here. So let me get my card here. You can see it right here. Okay, this fabric is represented, I don't know, like nine times, I think, in this quilt. And you can see another portion of it right here. Move that so you can see it. And it's the same fabric, but it looks very different. That's a good tip as makers, especially if you can't afford maybe a lot of fabric or you don't wanna buy a lot of fabric. I have this large print from my own collection and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So if I cut a square here, it's gonna look different than a square here, but it's going to be the same color way and it will match and go together. And of course it is from the same fabric. So it's just a tip to make you think about fabric a little differently. And that's what the maker did here was use a big print and cut different portions of it. Again, was it intentional? I don't know, maybe. So it is machine pieced and it is machine quilted. And I'm gonna flip it over and show you a little bit more information about the quilting at least. So when we look at the back, it's just a grid quilting. 
by machine and they use blue thread. It is one piece of fabric. This is a blue calico with uh, these red and white dots in it that represent flowers, I think, flowers and leaves, it's very pretty. And at the bottom here, we see some information. And this is one of the only quilts, this is the only quilt actually, that has a quilt label that the maker put on it. We can see here it was quilted by uh, Mill Hall Senior Center and it is uh, it does have a label. This label only has the maker's name and I chose to uh, redact the name of the maker just be to protect her identity even though she's passed I guess to protect the family because they did sell this at a yard sale and I don't want them getting any grief or feeling bad about that or anything like that but what's important to note is this maker only put her name on this label and no other information not a year not any details about the fabrics or what was made no washing details nothing like that and as makers we got to keep that in mind because you know these quilts are around a lot longer than we are and uh, future generations would really like to know some information about them another thing i want you to note is it was stuck on with this like iron on stuff i think it's iron on i could easily peel this off and i think that we need to make sure that we secure these in a better way when we put our labels on our quilts Anyway, it's a really neat quilt. Uh, oh, I don't think I talked about the binding. Let's talk about the binding. The binding is the same color as, or the same fabric as the setting triangles here. It is a little dirty and it has been washed. So it is a little dirty just from wear, uh, but it was put on separately and it was put on by machine and then machine attached to the back. So it wasn't hand attached on the back and the corners are mitered, which are done beautifully as well. So let's talk about what we can learn from this great quilt. The first thing is using those big prints. So if we use those giant prints in our quilts or even in scrap quilts, we get a little bit more bang for our buck because we can use different portions to keep the colors consistent, but also make it look a little different and more interesting. So it's always good to use a big print when you're making something like this. The next lesson that we can learn from this quilt is to label our quilts. Now this is the only quilt that has any identifying information like this on it, even though it is a minimal amount. And I just think it's important as we go forward to label them because, you know, here I am looking at quilts that are, well, this one 40 years old, and I've looked at quilts that are even over 100 years old, and I know very little information about them. So going forward, we really need to label our quilts and we need to have information on there like who, what, when, where, why, and how. And it would give us a lot more uh, going forward and we'd be able to really appreciate, in my opinion, the quilts a little bit more and not do so much guessing. And lastly, using that pop of a solid color like that yellow really frames this quilt and even matching the binding with it just makes it look like it's floating in a way and also just adds even more interest to, to this quilt. As always, thank you for joining me for this episode of Lessons from an Old Quilt. I hope you enjoyed this one, and I will see you next week for yet another episode. Have a great day. Make sure you take some time to sew, and I'll see you soon. Bye.